Hello and welcome back to another Digging the Game. In this series we play computer games as archaeologists. Now often this requires a certain amount of preparation. Playing an area or an entire game, uh, you know, to, to, to find the most exciting places, the most interesting talking points and bring them to you in a, in a structured way within a video. This is certainly the case when it comes to exploring the archaeology of Zelda Breath of the Wild, part 4 coming soon incidentally. But in other cases we like to explore these games fresh having never played them before. This is certainly the case uh, with C14 Dating. Liv and I are very much enjoying that ongoing series. We're going to be recording our next portion of that in the near future. But increasingly there's a third type of game in this series. Computer games that have been recommended to us by you. Whether these are titles to go and pursue, try and get hold of, or perhaps links to online emulated versions of computer games to try out, and some of those are coming in the future. Uh, they, they've been recommended as games that you think we should play or try to play as archaeologists. Sometimes in this category people literally send us physical copies of games, and today is one of those instances. Today, uh, a wonderful archaeosupian called George sent us a copy of Sphinx and the Cursed Mummy on the original Xbox. Thankfully, it works on the Xbox 360, and that's why I'm going to be playing it on today. Now, George has asked that I play this computer game for the first time on camera. So there's no preparation for this, there's no exploration, there's no curation. This is simply going to be uh, an experience. And well, it's Friday afternoon, I'm up for anything. Let's give it a go. So yes, I'm just so pleased that this title does work on the Xbox 360. Not all original Xbox games do. And so uh, whether you researched this beforehand, George, or, you, or you're, just, you're just lucky, uh, I'm glad. I'm glad I can play it. So Sphinx and the Cursed Mummy, it implies that this is going to be a bit of an Egyptological game. Is that a word? Egypt Egyptological? Uh, a game for an Egyptologist, anyway. A game set in Egypt. Blimey. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm not sure that I would say that is authentic Egyptian architecture. Uh, granted, I'm not I'm not a specialist, but um, rivers of lava. This looks a bit more more like Mordor, if I'm honest. But uh, let's 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 give it a go. Uh, new game, Sphinx A. Okay, I'm intrigued. Now, those of you who've been watching Archaeosuit for a while will know that I, I deliberately keep ancient Egypt as a, a bit of an unknown, so that I can enjoy it, you know, as a, as a fan of really hammy movies. And, oh, the time I feared has arrived. The darkness prophesied will soon descend upon us. We need to be prepared. Okay. I've chosen you both because you have already proven you are the most worthy apprentices. The mission that you are about to embark on will be a test of your strength and abilities. And that is not a human being. So, okay, this is clearly not, you know, this isn't Kara Cooney's uh, <laughs> realm of expertise. Prepare yourselves, for the path ahead will be highly dangerous. I cannot guarantee safe passage that you will return alive. Okay, but if you go of your own choosing, now is the time to stand down if you wish. If you must go, sorry. Okay, uh, well, I see. You have both accepted the task. I'll transport us to Uruk. Now that's a real place. Uh, the land of darkness. That's not a real place. Unless you count the northeast of England on a winter's day. Uh, there you will need to find the Blade of Osiris, an old and powerful sword protected by the demons of Uruk. Blimey. Pay yourself for the journey. Okay. Crikey. Now, I suspect that because this game isn't absolutely accurate in terms of its ancient Egyptian uh, archaeology and architecture, uh, this is what, what we might class, anthropologically at least, as a game that draws on um, 
uh, Orientalism, the idea that, that there's a mysterious Middle East and in further, farther east, east as well. That from Egypt to the east is all a land of magic and mystery. Uh, <coughs> yes, that is the infamous castle of Uruk. Nobody knows what goes on the, behind, beyond those walls, at least nobody alive. I can clearly feel the evil nature of that monstrous building. Look, as you can see, the piercing fiery ray is active. Oh, there's a beam into the sky. That's always bad. And that troubles me deeply. So it should. Legend tells us that it protects the castle and the surrounding area of Uruk with a formidable power. The area is full of traps and obstacles, but nothing as devastating as the ray. Beyond this point, my powers are useless. I'm afraid I can't accompany you any further. No, that, that's, that's not necessarily true. You can accompany these people. You just be powerless. There's, there's a difference there. Um, now, both of you must search out the magical blade of Osiris. Only one. Only if you work together will you have a possibility of finding it. Okay. Hello. I think I can see something interesting in the rock structure over there. I'll go investigate it. You should check this area. Okay. Now my character seems to be sort of partly fer feroic in terms of his headdress, but also he's got a tail. Interesting. Now again, remember, no preparation here. I have zero clue what I'm doing. Jump. Try jumping. Now being a game of its time... Ooh! Being a game of its time, um, there are uh, certain graphical qualities to the game that are noticeably not top-notch. But, you know, the architecture is coming through, and and again, it's, it is fitting in with that sort of Mordor slash um, exoticism sort of vibe. Notice how, uh, notice how X on the top right display changes when you approach certain objects or items. You can press X to pick up rocks, like this when you're close to them. Okay. Pick up. Uh, let's throw. It's an explosive rock, apparently. Oh, and the rock magically reappears. Okay. So I've got to say, George, so far, um, this is intriguing from the, I suppose, the, the technological aspect of Archeo Gaming. The idea of exploring computer games for their, um, you know, their history their sort of dig digitally uh, historical value, this historical value. Um, oh, this geyser is inactive. It looks like it requires additional lava flow in order to blow. Okay. Oh, oh I say, we meant to put the rocks in the lava, perhaps. Let's see what happens. Oh. Hey, Sphinx, I'm over here by the lava fall. Come on over, I need to show you something. Okay. Sphinx, incidentally, means strangler. Did you know that? Um, off we go. Hmm, this is too high for you, isn't it? I don't understand why the master insisted on having you accompany me. You're just holding me back. Lovely. I'm skillful enough to find the blade without your help. You'll need to figure out how to get up here yourself. Is that what you needed to show me? <laughs> I need to show you something. You're useless. Okay. Uh, so, the camera of the game just showed us the monster appearing over here. Anyway, as I was saying, yeah, so this is interesting from a sort of a... Uh, so far, interesting from a sort of, you know, historic perspective of how games used to be made. It feels a bit clunky like that. Um, Oh, oh, now he's got his tongue out, so can we grab a rock? Where's the rocks? The uh, rock's gone there. Look over here. Ah, ooh. Thank goodness. Sir. That made me feel a little bit sick. Okay, let's see. Can I throw this into his mouth? Okay, no, not quite. Let's pick this up. 
It's very epic music, isn't it, as well? Okay, ready, and... I should have to drop it on this time. <laughs> oh! oh! <laughs> Pray, you are far too scrawny. I'm starving, but I'm not desperate enough to eat the likes of you. Too many clothes. If you only had a few coconuts. If I haven't... I haven't had a coconut in ages. Mmm, just thinking about them. Yeah, okay, I can get you a coconut. I can take a hint. Uh, yeah, we, do we throw the rock? You put the raw lime in the coconut and mix it all up. Is that the, is that the song? Okay, so throw this at the tree. Yeah! yeah! Coconut times one. Okay, mister. Hey, you with the face paint. What's that? What's that? I smell on you. Is that <gasps> coconuts? Could I have some? Uh, sure. Delicious. Thanks. I could do it with a few more like that. If you get me some more, I might be able to help you. Okay. I can do that. I mean, that snake dangerous there. It will be dangerous, won't it? Um, I won't get near the snake. I won't get near the snake. Talk. Yep, another coconut. A few more. A few more. Oh. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Pick up stone. Oh, those are anks. Not ang ang angst. Anks. Uh, the ancient Egyptian symbol of life, I do believe. So presumably that must be that must fill up your life bar, I guess, in this game. Interesting. Ah, oh, are there any more coconuts? If we go back to the same tree. Oh, oh avoiding the snake. Ah! Oh, there you go. Look, yeah, an ank is. Slightly emptied there. Oh dear. Makes me anxious. No, okay. Sorry. Okay. Alright, I see. I see, Mr. Dragon. Here we go. Pick up. And throw. Completely missed. Thank goodness for these magic rocks. We keep on coming back and throw yeah. coconut. Okay. Now, actually, speaking of which, in terms of game design, it's interesting how, if you compare this to, for example, Zelda Breath of the Wild, which is hardly fair, um, but uh, these sort of games. Almost everything in the level will be useful for the objective at hand. It's very rarely just stuff there just for the, the sake of the artistic, you know, achievement of the of the level, which is in itself a design element, you know. Um, step on my tongue and I can help you reach where you need to go. Cool. First choose the horizontal direction, you then choose the vertical direction. I will spit you over to the position you have chosen. Choose carefully though. If I if you tell me to spit you into the lava, I'll do exactly as you say. Okay. How do we choose the direction? Oh, 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 right, okay. Um, so, horizontal. How do you choose it? Oh, right, oh, I see, okay, okay. And, ready, and, go! <sighs> ah, you got up here at last. I didn't think you would make it. Your snail's pace has lost its precious time. Anyway, I have found us the blood of Ra. Master Emotep, Emotep, oh, said it would allow us to walk on flowing lava and steaming geysers. Okay, but it's impossible to get near it. I'll need to find another solution. Well, well, I've, uh, well, you've been flying around. I've been using rocks, mister. So watch this. 
if I can pick up the rock. Oh, out. And throw. Yeah! I don't know why I didn't think of that solution before. Yeah, whatever. You were probably just lucky, or rather, I knew the solution and you, I was simply toying with you. Anyway, I'm going on ahead. Waiting for you is getting quite tiresome, he says. Okay, so, oh cool, so I've got a little, now I can walk on lava. Jump down! So yeah, so, and really, this, this, this design element of everything in the game, in the level being useful for the objective is just because of limited assets. You can't really have the luxury of just sort of having textures and environments that go on forever. Um, in a, you know, in a pre, in, a, in an older time, in a previous age, computer game speaking, uh, in terms of computer game positioning. So, what are we looking at here? Hmm. Hmm. Does that guy seem to want something? Okay. Can we... Oh, oh, oh! This is, this is an enjoyable game, George, I have to say. The, um... Uh, you know, it's, it can sometimes be a bit of a gamble playing older games that you're not familiar with, because sometimes your patience with some of the old game logic goes slightly out the window when you haven't got like a nostalgia or something to to hold you to that series. Unless it's you know it's a classic and it's just well designed, but this is well designed. I really like it, and I do just about. I seem to recall the Sphinx series just about. I remember it being on the fringes of my understanding when I was. Uh, when I was a teenager, back in the day, when this game was released. Insert year here. Okay, horizontal and okay, and vertical. So I'm not controlling this, by the way. It's just rocking back and forth, and you sort of go and here. Okay. The music's very epic. Oh, come on. Okay. Lava! So yes, like I say, it's Friday afternoon. Very much looking forward to the weekend. Looking forward to relaxing. It's been a busy few days. Just come back from a 260 mile round trip to Sheffield. Footage coming your way soon, by the way. Okay, and ready, steady, and... Oof. Oh, what's this? So perhaps... Oh, okay. Um... Is the problem that you can see me? Is it? Oh, oh, oh! Oh, okay, okay. So if I go around the edge and then jump up, and we go. Oh, rats! You... So a way to have you not see me. Oh, okay. Can I climb up here and up? And then in, ah, into a spike. So yes, I was about to say, I, I think I might have to return to this game in the future when there's a bit more that I can say about the ancient Egyptian element of it. But it is good fun and it does, it fits in, ah, fits in with that, um, that Orientalism that I was talking about, this idea that everything Egyptian can be sort of magical and mysterious. Yay, there we go. Um, sort of post-Napoleonic kind of idea of ancient Egypt. Oh, okay. So how do we get past this guy? 
Just get the camera to turn around. Hmm. Interesting. Oh no, I will throw a rock at your eyeball, mister. Will this work? Throw! Oh, my eye! Yeah. Oh, oops, oops, oops. Sphinx, over here! I may need you after all. No surprise. Look, if I throw a rock at an animal warren over there, perhaps you'll get something... If you throw a rock, sorry, if the rock animal warren over there, you, you might get something useful. Okay? Over where? Over here, okay. Oh, blimey. It's a big, tied down rock. Uh, pick up. Animal Warren. Yeah. They look pretty harmless. Be careful, Sphinx. These monsters look pretty harmless, but they are highly explosive. When angry, they flash red and hurl themselves towards their enemy, exploding onto contact. If you're quick on your feet, you can use them to your advantage by luring them towards an appropriate object. Okay, come on. Come on, come on. Aha! That's it, towards the rope. Now, I'm pretty sure Ancient Egypt didn't have these uh, little explosive monsters. But it did have dung beetles, you know, and they're small round things that lived in burrows and um, would throw themselves at you. I'm stretching things a bit. Okay. Is that now a useful bridge for me? Yeah. These sacred statues are there to save your progress. If you if a safe game was chosen, walk close to one and press X to leave your record of your quest up to this point. Uh Hey Sphinx up here, come, we must hurry. I'm gonna need your help up here. Just jump against the wall and use L to climb up, down, left and right, okay? Climb slowly, move lightly. Watch out for those spiders though, they could give you a nasty bite if you're not careful. Okay. Oh, oh. Oh, no kidding. It's like he's swimming up the rock. Look at him go. Swimmy, swimmy. Swimmy, swimmy. Okay. Oh. Laser beams! Over here, use the railing to cross the gap. Jump and grab the railing using L to move left and right. Cross slowly, move lightly, yes. Ah! Oh! really annoying. Okay. There we go, that's more like it. You go, oh, then you go, oh, and you go, oh, 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 and drop. Okay. Ah! Oh. Stop jump walking to lasers. Where'd he go? Ah! Oh. Came falling into lava. It's also, it's also very loose. The feel of the feel of the game, in fact, uh, let's continue. Hopefully, from where we left off. 
or am I going to regret not saving? Yep, I'm going to regret not saving. <laughs> well, um, this has been an interesting first try of this computer game. The ancient Egypt aesthetic is there, it is present, and it's especially present in the character design of Sphinx, and indeed the name of Sphinx, the protagonist. Uh, but as I was about to say, the, the loose sort of feel of the running and the jumping, very reminiscent of this era. So in terms of exploration of this world, I think it's going to take a bit of time to, to just hone some of these skills. It's a very, it's got, it's got that Xbox feeling to it. If, if you might know what I mean, you might not. Um, but, uh, but thank you. Thank you very much for this recommendation, George. I have enjoyed it so far, and I'll definitely return to it. And uh, when I get a bit, a bit further in the game, and I find some more explicitly ancient Egyptian stuff, for example, as a mummy, who turns up in the trailer to the game, uh, I'll return to it and show you guys in a future digging the game. Anyway guys, whatever you get up to this weekend, do have a lovely weekend, and as ever, until next time, do take care. Bye bye.